You know that we will have in December in Paris the COP21, the Conference of Parties 21, which uh, hopefully is going to reach a binding agreement on how to tackle climate change and uh, curb our carbon emissions. So today we had workshops uh, with researchers and a variety of uh, stakeholders discussing together what we would want to be heard up to December. Today I had the pleasure of moderating a table on overcoming silo thinking. We worked uh, in a workshop on refocusing the climate change debate. My roundtable was focusing on uh, local solutions, local networks, and what kind of uh, lessons we can learn from local initiatives for the debate at the UNFCC and COP21. Climate change is a cross-cutting issue, so you really need to get the feedback of different disciplines in order to find maybe a solution that would work in different sectors of policies. I would be very pleased, you know, to have these discussions with uh, not just the researchers but also practitioners and also it helps me to, you know, kind of narrow the gap. There are actually a lot of local initiatives which are working to mitigate greenhouse gases emissions or to adapt to the risks and impacts of climate change. But we realize that um, there are also a lot of different stakeholders with a different vision of what has to be done. I think again it's really about keeping informing the people the private sector as well as the public sector about climate risks and uh, potential solutions. So like collect good practices and uh, try to see how we can transpose this somewhere else. So I thought the contribution of researchers is, is incredibly, incredibly valuable. And it's very important that they actually take the time to communicate to the rest of us uh, who are not researchers and don't have the scientific and technical knowledge uh, what the issue is really about. To help like this, uh, like addressing the denial or raising the awareness, we really need to improve the way we communicate around the, around the topic. And overall, the point of view is that not only AXA has something to do, but it's how can we really help to position uh, the topic at higher levels. It's important to help people understand how climate change affects people in their everyday lives. And what we try to do is to base our reporting in science and we try to tell stories that make that science connect to the lives of everyday people so people can understand how this works. This is a win-win situation because if we do rightly prevention, we will have lower claims and we will give lower price to our customers and we will be able to give better services. That's really an important issue for insurers, but it's also an important issue for society and that's where we have really a good alignment between what researchers want and what an insurance company like AXA wants. We can have the same objectives, having knowledge freely shared in society so that we take better decisions when we prevent or mitigate or protect against risks. I was very pleasantly surprised. I think a lot of researchers uh, are very grateful that we are given this opportunity. It's actually very encouraging to see a company that is not only paying attention to this, it's actually also trying to improve our knowledge base so that we can make better decisions. And I think we reinforced this community, which is the real value of the AXA Research Fund and what AXA is trying to bring to the world through it.